Okay, now we're live. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll post. Can I uh, post it on my Twitter? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Go ahead. Right. I wish I had a Twitter. Uh, this will be archived <laughs> so everyone else can mirror it once we're done. Okie dokie. So, um, this, um, I had the idea a while back to start a podcast series, and I figured that um, since Pierre Trudank, um, that's been talking to me a lot about doing a debate, um, and I didn't uh, really engage it until now. I figured that this would be a nice opportunity to start um, podcast series and to do the debate. So, um, what the heck is that? Is that the helicopter? <laughs> Take Pierre for a ride. Wait, what, what channel is this on? Because I'm not, I'm, I'm not seeing it on. Uh, volunteer it. consumer. It's on his channel. Okay, okay. Volunteer. Uh, yeah, nobody in the room. Consumer. But right. um, so Pierre, he told me at first. He, the first thing that he wanted to discuss was uh, the definition of capitalism versus communism. Um, if I got that correctly. Yeah! 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 So essentially, like a follow-up to uh, um, his XSE debate. So vol voluntarist yeah. consumer, where? I, I, I don't know, but you're gonna have to look for a while. Okay. I just typed oh, in yeah, voluntarist yeah, and it came right up. Maybe you're doing it with the Y. People who do it with the Y are just wrong. Okay? Oh, okay, yeah, and that's probably why. I I totally did not <laughs> just do that. <laughs> oh yeah, the skull guy. Okay. Yeah, I've seen oh. you in comments and stuff. Okay. Uh, oh, wow, I'm honored. <laughs> well, fucking blame me for that, because I'm the one who pronounced it with a Y, so. <laughs> but, um... You're going for a ride. <laughs> All right. But, um, yeah, I'm sort of glad to be discussing this, because this is a point that uh, I didn't really touch upon as well as I would like to have in the Zex debate. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm also just yeah. going to randomly interject random points made in the comment section. Go for it. Well, I mean... <laughs> Actually, can I pull it up without destroying everything? <laughs> well, my first... Problem with uh, the Ze with uh, Zexy's uh, definition of um, socialism or communism is that um, it's using the <laughs> projected conclusion of communism or socialism as the uh, argument for how communism or socialism would work in practice. Uh, even according to Marx or uh, Peter Kropotkin, uh, the society. Um, it was never argued as if it has to be a stateless society or else it isn't communist or socialist. No, it was, uh, we're going to practice these things and that will result in a society where hierarchy and the state are abolished. So I, I find that to be a little bit disingenuous using... Well, yeah, so, so socialism is more characterized by... Um, well, I mean, it depends who you ask. So uh, an anarchist would say, well, no, you can't have socialism with a state. And I mean, it also depends on what definition of a state we're using here. So, like, for example, stateless doesn't necessarily mean without some sort of, like, government to coordinate things. Uh, so an anarchist would uh, define a state as the monopoly on violence, whereas a Marxist would define the state as uh, uh, the, the apparatus of class rule. So... Um, I'm a Marxist, so I would say socialism would have, so you would, you would have a state and then, um, eventually the, the state would fade out because you would no longer need, um, the, the state apparatus, if you will, to enforce, um, uh, class rule because, you know, uh, the, the, um, uh, classes, the, the differentiation between classes would be abolished. So I think um, it, it really depends who you ask. So you mentioned Peter Kropotkin. I'm pretty sure pre Peter Kropotkin said the state would need to be abolished. Um, Mark said that the state would be trans... Well, I think it was more... Um, 
explained by Lenin um, and sort of just briefly touched upon by Marx that the state would have would would exist and then uh, transition into a stateless society, which would be communism. So, well, right. But that's what I'm saying, though, is that the theory in practice is not a stateless society. The theory in practice was worker ownership of the means of production and redistribution. So the idea that it can't be a Marxist society simply because um, the state still existed, that that's absolute nonsense. No, that doesn't mean that it wasn't a socialist or communist regime in practice. It just means that your ideology doesn't work the way you think it does. Well, no, yeah, you're no, you're you're right. Like just because there was a state doesn't mean that um, it was socialism. And and anarchists will say, um, well, you can't have. So like as I said before, anarchists will say you can't have socialism without a state. And then personally, I don't I don't say that the USSR was state capitalist. I just look at it like, yeah, it was socialist because um, cap capital didn't exist in the country. I would say it's bureaucratic socialism. Like you say, how our uh, how capitalism is not actually your ideal capitalism. It's crony capitalism or it's corporatism or it's you said mercantilism or something. Well, I mean, mercantilism. It's mercantilism in a sense, but uh, more specifically, it is uh, fascistic corporatism, uh, or otherwise known as the third way. Um, it's where the state and the corporations have merged power, and they sort of give each other ability. The state um, enables the corporations. I mean, well, the the fact that corporations exist kind of proves that the state is enabling corporations because corporations can't exist without a state. But um, yeah, well, it's, right. this is not, it's not capitalist because I mean, you have what like Wall Street bailouts and regulations and taxes. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, would, I would say capitalism requires um, state intervention. intervention. What's up, Doc? Oh, God. Oh, God. So well, what do you mean? What do you mean? I I do, I do. Drunk, you're getting, Drunk, you're getting feedback. feedback. Shut it off. Shut it off. I know. It's the yeah, mere existence of a state, I mean, requires taxation, and that's you know the pillaging of private property. I mean, why do you need a how, gang? How is how is it the pillaging of private property? It's, it's a small taxation, but I mean, if you if you look at history, um, like. I mean, I, I know you don't like Keynes that much, but I mean, the entire idea of Keynesianism that is that um, you know, for for a mark because a, a market um, society, it, it it as it grows, it's it's cyclical growth. So there's always um, a boom and a recession and a, and a boom. So essentially, um, you you know, uh, Keynes Keynes like uh, formulation of say the theory of I, I believe it was aggregate demand was to essentially say that, well, capitalism can only, you know, we can only preserve capitalism if there's some state intervention. Oh, hey, ZZ's in, so, uh, in the chat. He is? Yeah. I'm going to look at the chat. How did uh, he find my channel? Oh, right, you shared it, didn't you, Pierre? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, no. No, I was retarded. I put it on my Twitter, and I said, here's the date, and I didn't put the uh, the actual link, and then I just, like, <laughs> and then I, I posted it again because I, I forgot to put the actual debate, but it's the actual link. But, it's but, nothing yeah. but commies in the chat. Yeah. Pretty much. How much subscribers do you have, Esoteric Entity? I, um, like, I, um, I 1,158 subscribers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I have 2,000. A little over 2,000. I think last time I checked, it was like uh, 2,600. All right, bro. I have 16 subscribers, so bet on my leg roll, okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, but uh, Keynesianism is a fundamentally flawed concept because taxation is required to hold up a state, and a state basically is a monopoly on force. That's how it's designed. So um, the idea that the state is needed to protect private ownership, that's an oxymoronic concept because... 
what you're basically saying is that you need a gang of thieves to protect you from a gang of thieves. It's circular logic, it's self-defeating, hypocritical, and it completely is just 100% unworkable. Uh, I'd like to interject for a second. Uh, someone in the chat said uh, said something real good. Didn't Adam Smith say that uh, capitalism did not uh, could not exist without a, a state? Discuss. Uh, well, I, I I believe I heard something like that. Um, but uh, I know I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I I'm not sure enough to to agree with that statement. So Adam Smith. Um, but, cap sorry. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, I mean, as you say, so, like, the the problem is, like, through your ideological uh, disposition, it's just, you, you view the state as, oh, it's just this separate thing from capitalism. It's it's antagonistic in, uh, towards capitalism. And in, in some ways, yeah, um, clearly, like, taxation is fairly antagonistic towards uh, a capitalist's profit. But well, generally, I mean, yeah. uh, generally speaking, that the state does... It it, it, ta it it takes a little, but it, it gives a lot, so it holds up the entire system. And well, so, I mean, I mean that's, that's the problem, though, is that the state artificially inflates demand. If you have public services provided by the state, capitalism cannot work because capitalism relies on competition to self-regulate the market. And if the state is artificially inflating the demand by giving these companies no incentive to compete, well, then you can't have competition. Therefore, capitalism, by the model that it is theorized it cannot exist under a uh, state society. Okay, but like empirically, so so here here's my criticism is so you say that um, so uh, this isn't like uh, crony so this isn't capitalism it's it's something else like crony capitalism, but that's not really based on sort of empiricism or just just looking at standard history. I mean. It, it's you have this idealized version of capitalism, and you essentially it's like see like I, I'm sure you're a rational skeptic guy, and you've heard the the statement that you know um, so in science if if your model uh, it doesn't if if you have to uh, change reality to fit your model, then you know it's clearly there's something wrong with your model. Your your model should work with. Um, the reality and it's you have this just idealized version of capitalism that it's just imperial like ju just by like like standard observation of, of, of history I mean like the police for example I don't know what your opinion on, on public police is but uh, yeah. It, they, they yeah okay I, I agree with you but like they're they're um, the the uh, what like their their inception was because of capitalism because you had um, strikes and uh, workers revolts and so like uh, originally you would just have like the national guard they'd be sent in they would shoot people problem is that created oh, wow. so these existed before worker strikes uh well yeah but not in the form we know them as you had you, you had like a national body but you didn't have like the the modern police system where it essentially was like occupation of of communities um, to keep law and order etc so um, but even, but as I was going to say, uh, using history to talk about um, an ideology, that's, I mean, if you're going to talk about the ideology in practice, well, that's one thing, but you're trying to describe how the ideology is defined, and using history to do that is kind of fucking stupid, because we're talking about I mean, how the how the uh, term existed. So, I, I mean, I, I suppose that um, history, in the sense that the history of the word or the theory of the ideology, um, I suppose that that can be considered an accurate, uh, somewhat rational way of looking at it. But um, taking the definition of the word and then applying it to uh, real world examples when even in the example you provided even if the police um, in the modernized sense were de designed to stop union union protests um, well that's not an example of capitalism that's an example of the state and corporation merging power yet again 
Yeah, vol- vol- I'd like to interject. Voluntary unions are completely uh, capitalist in nature. Yeah, and that's I, I, it's, it's good that you touch upon that because, I mean, yeah. Uh, the pr- My only problem with unions is not um, that they're arguing for better wages. As a matter of fact, if you actually um, take the theory of capitalism um, and how it would work with the self-regulating market, uh, unions fit actually perfectly into that model. Uh, the problem is uh, forced unions that um, strong arm the, go- the uh, companies using the force of government. That is where uh, people like me oppose the unions. Okay, so, well, I, I've heard that argument before. You essentially just want unions as, like, a uh, bargaining power. Um, but it, it's a touch upon your point. It's, like, my problem with, like, your your definition of capitalism is it's entirely utopian. Like, it's, it's I mean, you claim to be a rational, skeptic empiricist, but it's entirely based outside of any empiricism. It's, it's just complete utopianism. Well, it's not utopian because I'm not saying that the society would be absolutely perfect. Uh, I I know that there would be problems. No, it doesn't. Society, but the thing you, is, utopian. You, you, utopian, like a, to be a utopian, doesn't mean oh, I have this perfect society. It's just that your 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 idea for a society just isn't. It's it's just grounded in idealism. It's like oh, this is what society should be, not um. Well, well uh, just so like, um, it's like well, um, so like, essen- like, like essentially, so you look at cap, like uh, you look at capitalism. And I know you say this isn't capitalism, but um, you, um, you, you, you just sort of say, well, okay, uh, so this, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, um. So it, it, it's 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 not capitalist, and uh, I'm not going to call it cap- capitalism, even though you know, like there really hasn't been an example um, of of your you sort of view idealistic view of capitalism um, in, in history. It, it, it's just uh, like 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 that's that's what I'm saying by utopian. I don't mean I know you just say I I know you're not going to say oh everything's going to be perfect and just going to be rainbows and unicorns and stuff. It's just. Your your analysis and your proposition is just not based in empiricism. You you don't you you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I understand what you're saying, but the problem there are too many problems with that. Um, firstly, a utopian theory quite literally is a theory that has um, Im- by definition, it is a theory that pre- uh, advocates for impractically ideal or uh, social or political systems, but secondly, the the argument that a stateless, um, a completely voluntary capitalist society um, can work, it's 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 re- a really dumb argument because I mean, there's a lot of things that are proposed, and there's a lot of things people are working towards that. Um, we can't observe them in practice yet. They're perfectly they're perfectly reasonable um, conclusions to make, such as, I don't know, if people were to go to Mars. No one's ever been to Mars, but um, it's a perfectly, you know, if somebody comes up with a reasonable theory as to how we can get there, I mean, all we can do is test the theory and then see how it plays out. But to say, oh, it's, it's never happened, and because it's never happened it never will happen well i mean if we took that idea and we applied it consistently well then nothing would ever happen because nobody yeah, like, would ever think that something could be accomplished that like uh, the smallpox vaccine didn't exist until it did to, to make an example yeah, no i i get what you're saying but it's like so like you you also one thing you said was um if i remember correctly that uh a capitalist who does not support who who supports the government cannot be a true capitalist. Do you still stand behind that statement? Oh, absolutely. I um, if you support government regulation, well, then you you don't support uh, voluntary association. And capitalism, by definition, is private ownership of the means of production, where exchange is determined by private decision. So you can't be a capitalist if you support the government. 
okay, but I mean that definition isn't completely. Um, it, it's not completely incompatible with a, a a state. And first of all, I mean, like, see that that's that's what I'm talking about. Utopianism. It's like so an actual capitalist who wants the government to to uh, exist. It's like by your your own ideological disposition, you, you're just saying that like you're just completely den like uh, denying that there's any chance that yeah maybe capitalism. Um, through its own interest, would want the state to exist. So essentially, like, it can't exist with the state, and I mean, I, I've explained why. I think twice now. Yeah, I know, but like, that's that's what I'm saying. It, it it like you're 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 the way you're approaching this is just it's it's pure ideology. It's just well, this, I mean, like. Okay, yeah, that's that's uh, how uh, uh, capitalists behave and work in a market. And I, yeah, I know it's not a completely free market, um, but at one time I would you would probably admit that it was, and you just did not. So you essentially say it's 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 so the the um, so so capitalism. I mean, would you say that uh, the early United States was capitalist? I the very early United States. There was still taxation. There were still tariffs on foreign imports. Um, I would say that. It was a freer market than it was now, but to say that it is capitalist is um, just simply not true. <laughs> okay, but see, like that's uh, um, see, like see, it's just like it's hard to argue with that because it's like, well, I mean, it, it's like. It's like so. Like I'm sure you would bring up this. Uh, this so like if an ANCOM would like when you when ANCOMs bring up that oh the USSR wasn't socialist because uh, you know it it what it had a state or something you would say well no that's dumb it's just you're de you're denying your ideology in practice aren't you doing the same thing you're denying your ideology in practice well no because I mean yeah and because capitalism has not yeah I know. <laughs> See, well, and, then, and now we're reaching very circular the, logic. The difference, though, is that capitalism, the proposed theory of capitalism, is not is not a stateless society, or, I mean, it's just the conclusion of capitalism is a stateless society, and that's all I'm saying. Definitely is in that, degrees. Um, it, it comes in degrees. See, that's more all, reasonable. All that I'm saying. That's a little more reasonable. Like, th there is a spectrum going to be led yes. to a stateless society, and I'm not saying, oh, because it's a state, because um, it isn't a stateless society. Well, I'm not saying that for the reason that socialists or communists say it. I suppose is would be a uh, better way of putting that. But how aren't you? Like, I, I, so like socialists and communists, they argue that. Uh, the USSR, so like an ANCOM would argue, well, the USSR wasn't socialist, it was state capitalist because the state still existed and it controlled the means of production. And I mean, I do, I, I would, and if you were to call that out, I, I probably would agree with you. I think it's unfair to say that it is state capitalist. I'd say, I, I mean, I'm not a Leninist or anything, but I would say the USSR was like a bureaucratic socialism, you know. I'm not um, a Leninist, quotes Lenin yeah. 15 I mean, minutes earlier. On, I mean, on top uh, of the fact that it's simply... <laughs> Um, not true. The the USSR is calling anything state capitalist just um, is a demonstration. Yeah, of how according to your own ide according to your own ideology. Yeah, but it's it's like <laughs> like it's just I, I don't know how you can see like it's just you're arguing from a stance of just pure ideology. You, you know what I mean? Like well, I mean. It's, yeah, I guess technically, by definition, I am because the society has never existed. But as I've explained prior, that doesn't mean that it's an impractical theory. I mean, we have empirical evidence that can prove that um, the free market theory, such as uh, supply and demand creating the minimum, creating the like you don't need a minimum wage because of the supply and demand of an industry or um uh I, I can um i can get a link and put it in the chat sidebar here but not on the stream because it just wouldn't show up but um i mean we, we have proof that freer markets lead to um uh, more prosperous societies so don't remember where I was going with that. <laughs> uh, 
You'll remember once the stream's done. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I, yeah, well, I, I, I get off it sometimes too. To watch it again. Um, uh, I, I'd like to, I'd like to just acknowledge something as Easy said in the. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to bring that up um, in the chat that uh, capitalism doesn't equal competition. Uh, I just want to acknowledge. Uh, okay, uh, I was going to bring up something else, but uh, well, of course, um, capitalism doesn't equal competition. But in order to work, capitalism needs competition. I was going to so. say the same thing. Yeah. Mhm. Mm I can agree with that. So, so I mean, would you would you agree that like would you say that you are an idealist, um, esoteric entity? I suppose by definition, because, I, mean, I would. Okay. By, well, I, I'm I'm a I'm a materialist, so I'd argue that the. Uh, Social relations, um, uh, they 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 come out of uh, material conditions. So essentially, the material conditions are a prerequisite to the standing um, social uh, social relations, which is what sexism brought up. So I mean, um, so what I'd say is like, so when you say like our system isn't capitalist because it doesn't fit your own um, idealistic um, uh, measure or your own idealistic. Uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, idealistic reasons. Yes, um, the definition of capitalism. Right, but I mean, like, that... Uh, but, like, you're... Like, it's just... You're, you're approaching that through, like, just... Uh, like, a, a complete... Like, it's just, like, just purism. Like, uh, you know, it's, like, it's it's just... It, it's, it's, a, it's a statement that's just... It's too grounded in, um, like, your own... Ideology, so it's it's a really just hard to dispute that. Where it's like, okay, well, it's like it's like when you say that, like, um, you know, uh, you you would criticize a socialist if they say, well, you know, if they say every every system that claimed to be socialist that uh, uh, failed or or didn't meet their standards, um, it is not socialist because you know it doesn't meet meet their standards. And I I see. Uh, many anti-communists bring that up a lot. Is is well, that's just kind of a cop out when you just say, "Oh, well, this isn't socialist because it doesn't meet these standards." So, but you're doing the same thing. That's a pretty valid point. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to be. Uh, I've I've been hammering across. Mm, well, I mean, it's it, the air. thing socialism or communism is that it's just worker ownership of the means of production you can have a state and you can ha i mean you can have a state and you can still have socialism with capitalism i'm not saying that oh uh, capitalism argues for there to not be a state because that's no adam smith never said that there is no state uh in a capitalist society what i'm saying what i'm saying though is that uh, following the conclusion of capitalism and its proposed ideology, there cannot be a state. I will give you. It is a very, very similar argument. Okay, to so that the libertarian. Yeah, but so essentially, it is so, not the same argument. So essentially, what you're saying is you just want to follow capitalism to its ideological conclusion, which is a more fair point. But don't deny that it isn't capitalism because that's a cop out. That, that's, I, that's well, just, it's not a cop out. I, I, I would, I would definitely call right. his version of uh, capitalism like a hundred percent capitalism, where it's gone as far as it can go. It, that's the you know the furthest degree. Like, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So you're trying to follow capitalism to its logical conclusion. So. You can't half-ass um, a free market because when you do that, you get things like uh, pub, you get things like health care with a public option. Not to mention that. I mean, that entire situation was caused by government intervention to begin with, through with Medicare and Medicaid. But uh, I suppose that's a different debate for a different time. I, I just like to say what everyone's thinking. Um, dorky chick gamer, you're either on the stream or you aren't. Please continue. All right. So uh, essentially, like. Um, what what I, I was trying to say earlier was that uh, capitalism, um, uh, like it it it, it um it, it so like I I argue that like uh, the state is it accompanies well, so it's basically capitalism through its own interest just it, it um, the state is required to keep capitalism uh, um, in power essentially and I mean like so 
you often see like most capitalists aren't like most capitalists aren't against um, uh, the, the the government. In fact, like like even capitalists who are libertarians, like, I've never really known like a an actual cat like a capitalist that's like a an actual full on anarcho capitalist. Usually they're like uh, like like the Koch brothers, for example, are libertarians, but they're not against the uh, government entirely. So even they say, yeah, we still need a, a state for military and police, et cetera, et cetera. Well, of course, it's just, and then you actually debate. I mean, you get into their reason for that, and you actually look at it, and then you realize that, I mean, their ideas for that are incredibly flawed as well. I mean, they believe in the Keynesian idea that uh, the state requires the protection of private property um, and stuff like that. Which of course is not true. Well, that's that's not fully the Keynesian idea. It's uh, well, I mean, it was aggregate demand. So. Well, 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 what you're saying is just well, the state needs the so like the capitalism needs the state to exist to uh, enforce private property. That's just sort of like a. <laughs> I think that's yeah. like a Lockean thing. Uh, yeah, Keynes, I, I still... Sorry, Keynes, Keynes just said uh, like well, his his theory was a. Uh, it was like the, um, uh, let me see, Keynes' ag Aggregate Demand, I believe, uh, the, the title of his book. So essentially Keynes just argued that um, uh, the, the government needed to, the government intervention in the economy was necessary to um, uh, uh, manage price levels and uh, inflation so that uh, consumers have more buying power um, because, you know, um, so that like, so for example, like in the Great Depression, because um, price levels rose. Uh, essentially, they didn't have enough buying power. So it, the theory of um, aggregate... I, I don't understand. I, I'm not a Keynesian, so I mean, you know, I'm just kind of going off of uh, um, what I generally understand. So that the... Uh, so um, so, well, so no, Keynes... Uh, I'm not arguing that that was Keynesianism. Hmm? What I'm explaining is that that was... Um, a part of the Keynesian belief is that um, you needed the state to protect private property, as you you just said it like earlier. So, well, yeah, no, well, that's that's not Keynes's theory. That that theory predates Keynes by, <laughs> but, but it is a portion of his theory. Is what I think he's getting at. Okay. Yeah, and if if I said that that was Keynes's theory, well, then I correct myself because that's not what I meant. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I finally can hear. Yeah. For the record, um, it was the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank that uh, caused the Great Depression. So, just uh, for the record. <laughs> okay. Um. So, okay, so um, I think we kind of touched on that point. Uh, well, I don't. I think it would be hard to. Uh, it just seems we're at like kind of a, it just like what happened with the, the sex Z debate. It just we're we're at like a, a point where it's like we're kind of just going in circles. Um, yeah. So essentially, yeah. So essentially, it's just like this is just something we really won't agree on. So then, should we come up with a different question to start debating on? Since you guys have come to kind of an impasse. Uh sure. Yeah, let's ask the chat. Uh... We shouldn't debate about third wave feminism because everyone just knows it's wrong. I think uh, Tovio brought up a good question, um, individualism and capitalism, because I, I think we probably, I think we both describe, describe ourselves as individualists, so. Right. Yeah. So I, we, we could debate um, capitalism. I, I think capitalism is against the ego and the individual and in, um, individualism, and obviously you think that uh, yeah, individualism and capitalism go pretty well. I, I want to hear your reason. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That I mean, sounds like a good question. Okay. Um, essentially, I just say like uh, property rights. Just they 
are fairly arbitrarily defined and that they 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 come uh, at conflict with the individual specifically in the workplace so the uh um exploitation of the worker um and the extraction of their surplus value uh so i mean so like so you know for so for the worker i would say it, it's um it's it's against their their individual interests for well, uh, pro property rights and uh, capitalist. Um, well, Marx's theories are su such a bunch of crap, and yeah, I did uh, finish reading Das Capital recently, but um, one of the major problems. Uh, das Capital. Yeah. Yes. But... Das. Yeah. Das. Yeah. Well, Das Cap is it's that like condensed version, right? Not Capital Volume One. Um, or volume yeah. one or two. But yeah. I, I read it enough to realize um, very quickly the problem with all of Marx's theories is um, he makes baseless assumptions like that, that um, actual uh, um, empirical economic data that can be proven uh, flies in the face of, like surplus value theory, uh, primitive accumulation. But And then he uses those, like, okay, for example, primitive accumulation. Um, it makes the assumption, first of all, that uh, bosses are arbitrarily defining the wages, and that's absolutely not the case. Wages are determined by supply and demand. But um, what he'll do is, and I mean, none of his economic theories are based in actual empirical data, or and the ones that were considered to be... Um, like promising at the time uh were were debunked later on but the the problem with marx is he makes these baseless claims and then he uses these baseless claims to come up with uh theories for how the market works and problems in the market so basically uh marx's writings it's it's like the economic equivalent of how the mainstream media like cnn they'll cite uh washington post and then the washington post will cite buzzfeed and the and buzzfeed will cite no one <laughs> it's kind of like that um okay that's that's interesting but uh i mean i'd say like um uh i i i uh I, uh, I I really don't see what you're getting at here. So, um, what, what, how are they baseless? So explain explain how they're baseless. Because they're based all, often, um, like for example, primitive accumulation and the um, surplus value theory. For example, um, Marx doesn't even try to explain in an empirical fashion how those are demonstrated in practice. All he does is basically just say uh, primitive accumulation exists uh, because workers are arbitrarily defining wages. Um, how do I know that they're arbitrarily defining wages? Well, um, I, I wrote it. And um, so they're baseless quite literally by definition. So that's why I call them baseless. Okay. Um, so pr primitive accumulation, I believe, was essentially when um see i haven't finished uh reading uh surplus uh, uh, uh what, what was the name? um it's the theory that yeah wait, wage uh it's the theory that capitalists are just hoarding all the money and yeah yeah no i know i know what you're talking about that there yeah um well i mean that's 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 true in the fact that like uh for example a lot of um um um, um, uh, so a lot of like uh, uh, migrants, illegal immigrants, whatever you want to call them. Um, I mean, they're they're paid like <laughs> pretty like I mean like if if you look at like uh, the the way like migrants are paid, like they're they, they I would argue that's uh, they're paid quite arbitrarily. Well, that's actually like, not true. Not... It's the same thing as the gender wage gap. The uh, standard. Um, general amount that uh, people of that group make. It's not because they're being paid less. It's because um, they tend to, people in that work tend to take lower paying jobs or um, 
I'm not, I'm not like being racist. I mean, that's just what the that's what the figures show. Yeah, I'm not gonna call you racist. I don't. I'm not one. All right. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank. I'm just. Uh, but but yeah. So. I mean, that's what um, the theories are representing. Is that I mean, they have uh, generally lower income jobs, and uh, a lot of like uh, the migrant workers don't pursue higher fields of education. So I mean, the fact that that group is being paid less has nothing to do with the. Uh, wages being defined arbitrarily by whatever reason. Well, yeah, but I mean, they, they essentially do pay them, like, as less as they can get away with, because they wouldn't, you wouldn't have to pay them the, the minimum wage. But they don't, though. That's the point. How don't they? Could you... From what I, I've seen, like... I literally just explained it, that the figure for how migrants are paid is not based Yeah, because it, uh, it's, it's, it's not, because uh, they, they uh, have low, um, lower levels of education. I, I know what you're saying, but I mean, we're talking about, like, farming jobs here, like, um, like, e even, like, I'd, I'd assume the market rate, um, uh, determined by supply and demand wouldn't even meet uh, the levels at what they're being paid. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, um, it's really just dependent on the job that they're doing on the farm, and that's not uh, based on arbitrary means. It's based on how much the worker can pay for those specific uh, employees. I'm not the worker, but the employer can pay for those specific employees. And that is uh, determined by supply and demand. That's how um, wages are defined. Shane Killian had a really good video on this. I, I recommend it to anyone watching. Well, an Eastern Marxist wants to come on. And I, I was going to say, uh, the, the I haven't finished reading Wage, Labor, and Capital, so I couldn't really give you a good uh, refutation. So, um, Oh, God, even more communists. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough helicopters. <laughs> if you want, I can invite um, uh, Eastern Marxist in here. Well, I can, okay, I can, I mute, guess my, I I can mute my... Yeah, uh, well, um, if you don't want, want me to, that's fine. But, uh, I think we're cool with it. Okay. Yeah, it's I don't fine. Say why not? All right. Just more people to sit in the wings and uh, think. So what's happening now? A lot they're, of things. They're adding oh. uh, uh, someone named Eastern Marxist to the chat. Oh, okay, okay. Has anyone heard of him before? Aside from no, uh, no I haven't heard of half the people here before today. Same. <laughs> Actually, I only know one person. So, Hello. That's just how bad it is. <laughs> well, now you have more people to subscribe to. Uh, yeah, too. <laughs> totally didn't stutter because I still don't know any of you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is your profile pictures and I can't read my right. search. I, I sent him the link. All right. Also, uh, it, it's worth noting that Eastern Marxist was actually an anarcho-capitalist before. Um, oh, he converted. Yeah, oh, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, the, I've, I've really literally crazy. never even heard of that before. Yeah, that's so, really new. Wait, it's interesting. So and an cap changed over to a kami or something. Definitely got to ask yeah. him about that. Yeah, that's yeah. actually really interesting. Can I ask that, that sounds right, fascinating. Can I've only heard the opposite, so that's awesome. I kind of I'm really interested now. The rarity. I never thought that could happen. Yeah, like that's unusual. You you just like he went from. It's just, wow. Let's yeah, be. It's crazy that someone could agree with you and then change their opinion, isn't it? Well, no, no it's, it's just, just like it's just, just about um people going from socialist to capitalist or you hear about progressive going to ANCAP as was my case. Um, but right, I mean, I'm going to make uh, myself a right. profile picture. 
I am here. Can you hear me? Nice to meet you, Carl. <laughs> uh, your triggers me. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I go for. Um, we need more helicopters. If I could go, um, just get right into the claim. Uh, what Mark's quote are you saying where he says wages are determined arbitrarily? Well, that's I, I what primitive accumulation part. is. Primitive accumulation is the theory that um, wages... Oh, uh, no, well, primitive accumulation better. is the origin of capital. It's not the same thing as Marx's theory of wages. Well, that's what, what, that's what it is. Is that It's explaining... Um, the, here, let me, let me... Here, I have Wage, Labor, and Capital, Chapter 3 up right now. He has a, cha he has a section titled, What Are Wages?, so the last thing it says, here's the quote Marx, wages as we have seen are therefore are the price of a certain commodity, labor power. Wages therefore are determined by the same laws that determine the price of every other commodity. The question then is, how is the price of a commodity determined? Then he gets into how, how supply demands affect Yeah, he prices. literally just said, even in your quote, that prices are of um, employment are determined arbitrarily. What? No, he said that they're determined by the same laws that govern the prices of other commodities. Yeah, Commodity and he said prices are not set arbitrarily. Laws they're set that govern the prices of other commodities. They're based on arbitrary means. So wait, wait where did he say that? Saying that they're based wait, on arbitrary. And he's how saying are they based on arbitrary means. I thought you just were arguing that they're based on supply and demand. Therefore, he is saying that wages are determined by arbitrary means. No, the he's next not chapter is saying it, but think about it. It's an inference. So, have you read Wage Labor and Capital? Okay, so like, yeah. the, allow me to interject for a second. So when I was bringing up migrants, it was to say that, um, uh, so like primitive accumulation, I think it's wages that are determined uh, arbitrarily only outside of a uh, of the market. So, for example, like the hiring of uh, illegal migrants is because they, they don't have to really pay them market prices. They can just pay them like pretty much the lowest they can so, so the lowest they can get away with and so like primitive accumulation what Marx uh, Eastern Marx has said was yeah that's true it, it, it's um it, it, it describes the beginning of, of capitalism where wages were set fairly arbitrarily but uh, the if we're talking about like the labor theory of value then no like yeah uh, Eastern Marxist is right that um, uh, labor is the, the the price of of uh, or the the rate of uh, wages is is um, in relation to the price of commodities. I just wanted to say that. Hey, excuse me. Well, for going going sound All right, but no, he does not say that wages are set arbitrarily. Um, he says, as the quote I gave you points out, he says that it's determined by the same laws that govern the prices of other commodities, because labor power is a commodity itself. So there's no reason that prices would be set for commodities as supply and demand, and then for some reason labor power is just exempt to that rule. Well, yeah. obviously, yeah. I mean, but he's saying that, I mean, they're determined by arbitrary means because no, he's saying he says in the next chapter how they're determined by price by um, supply and demands and cost of production. No, he does not. Section by what is the price of a commodity determined? I mean, in this book, he, or it's not really a book. I wouldn't really call it that. It's pretty short. Here, I can send it to you if you want. I mean, he talks about supply and demand in this, and um, he did not just ignore supply and demand. I mean, like, Smith had his own labor theory of value. You think Adam Smith... I mean, like... Well, it's not the labor theory of value. It's just a theory of value. I mean, the labor theory of value is its own independent theory of value. Yeah, but Smith also not, has a, not, what are you wait, what are you arguing exactly? And when you take into account the uh, Diamond Lake paradox, well, then you can pre Diamond Water paradox. pretty quickly see that uh, uh, wage is not that um, the value of a commodity is not determined by the labor. It is uh, in fact determined by um, praxology. Uh, so can you explain how the diamond water paradox does that? Well, um, and also I, I, suppose, I just want I, you to know that the diamond water paradox was actually something that comes out of Ricardo, and he was a supporter of the labor theory of value. Well, it doesn't matter what he supported. Is I'm just, I'm just letting you know where it comes from. Paradox. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
that's sort of irrelevant. I mean, God, I, I'm really not trying to bring up Godwin's law here, but I mean, Hitler, he, he believed that he believed in a bourgeois capitalist class and the, he believed that the Jews were the bourgeois capitalist class. But I mean, uh, I, you don't actually, consider that. Wait, what did he say? What? That? what? What did he say? They were part of the bourgeois. He did. When? When? What, are, what quote? I mean, if you're going to quote Otto Strasser. Marxist class warfare, but the only difference between his belief and Marxist class warfare was that he believed that the bourgeoisie class specifically. Believe in class collaboration. What do you what? think? What? believe in class collaboration. Mussolini quote The fascist doctrine is online. You want me? I, I did. A, I literally. Just, I can find you the Mussolini quote where he explains why he rejects the Marxist theory of class struggle. Do you want me to do that? Well, Mussolini is a fascist and Hitler's not. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mussolini or Hitler. Can I, ask, can I ask a question about a quote he made? Who? Um, Karl Marx. Yeah. Um, all right. This came from Marx People paper, April 16, uh, 1858. Is it one of his anti Semitic quotes. <laughs> It, it says, um, that... the classes and races too oh, weak to master yeah. the new conditions of life must give way. Um, they <laughs> must perish into the revolutionary holocaust. Sorry, my voice. <laughs> yeah. Oh my that. god. That's actually, I, I didn't that's actually, know that. No, that's, that's actually... Good. That's completely bullshit, and here's why. Uh, so when he, so the first part, the classes and races, blah, 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 he wasn't well, referring that's... to, like, black people. He was referring to, so, for example, in Germany, the peasants at the time, um, peasants, so well, there, was, there, there, there was a large, no, there, there was a large time. influx of, of uh, those working in rural areas, uh, and they went to the cities. Um, that's what he meant by classes and races. So as capitalism progressed, the, the uh, rural uh, farming communities would give way for the rise of the industrial working class. That's what he meant. And the, he and the second part of the, 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 the second part of the revolutionary Holocaust comes from something completely different. It's a completely different source. The, the first part is from yeah, what yeah. Marx actually said. The revolution, the part where the revolutionary ho Holocaust is from somewhere completely different. You can actually see it's... in that quote where it says, um, so um, it says, you know, it says like, so after that, where it says the uh, classes and the races, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, it, it, it uh, says, so like the, the symbol for, so the bracket, dot, 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 bracket. Um, and then it says, uh, must give way in the revolutionary Holocaust. So like, if you know how like, quotes work use the uh, bracket dot 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 bracket to explain that they um you're cutting out some of it and then um going to something else they said so uh and and well, the I'm thing is the part with the revolutionary no, the, no part with, the first part is the first part is but the second part isn't so the second part is from somewhere different and i i think it even gives two different sources in that quote i'm, I'm familiar with the the quote you're 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 stating yeah, I know and Democratic it's... Socialist O1 did a video on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he uh, yeah. He, that guy uh, is a yeah, fucking... Uh, watch his video. He explains it. I'm pretty sure he can Okay, I, I, look, I have my problem. I, I, like, I like Democratic Socialist O1. He doesn't like me. We kind of have problems on... He likes to, like, yell at me on Twitter. I, I don't hate the guy. He's... But, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, I don't hate him either, but he's not a good citation for information. The dude is a loon. That doesn't make what he says wrong. I'm pretty sure that the yeah court, no that doesn't like again well, I, yeah, I I have what no he's problem. saying is wrong. I mean oh, I'm not saying no, it's you not. Prove that what you're saying. I'm not saying that he's a loon wrong. and therefore he's wrong. I'm saying that he's wrong and therefore he's a loon. But but that vi that specific video like it... okay. But I mean like you're not addressing what he actually said. You don't have a response to what what that actual point was. Yeah, and I I suppose I'll have to sit down and watch it, but from what I've seen, I mean, capitalism is feudalism because capitalism is is feudalism. Yeah, that's sort well, of. Well, I'm not I'm not sure if that's exactly what I said, but no, I I think comparing capitalism to feudalism is bullshit. Even even Marx said that the two were not the same. Um, in fact, he said he actually like. Uh, I guess well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, well, no. In his theory of historical materialism, it, it can be compared to feudalism. Um, it's not the same, obviously, um, but it's very similar. I mean, under feudalism, the property relations were still there was a ruling class who owned the property, and then there was a peasant class who 
by the nobles, and then your class was determined by your relation to the state. Yeah, I, no, the difference kind of is up. that um, in a feudal system... Actually, hold on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rejoin on my phone, because my lap... Under a feudal system, there was right a ruling class that was uh, empowered by the state, and um, the peasant class that were forced to work for the feudal class were basically slaves. Um, that is not, and they were forced into that completely involuntarily, uh, to compare capitalism to feudalism is like, you're comparing apples and oranges. Um, the only thing that makes them even remotely similar is that they're an economic system, and using that model, you can say that communism and capitalism are the same, and that is, I don't even think I need to point out how fucking ridiculous that would be. All right, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. I shouldn't cut out now. Okay, sorry, what were you saying? Exo, or what's your name? Es Esoteric entity. Esoteric. Esoteric. About feudalism? Well, I was just saying that uh, in a feudal system, um, first of all, the, the owners of the land, first of all, they were... Um, basically leeching off of the labor of the people and they were empowered by the state to do so so it was not only a completely involuntary exchange uh, because the people the peasant class that were basically forced into slavery to work for them um they did not have a say in that and but right. secondly i mean what does that remind you of <laughs> i'm just saying uh, what a voluntary exchange on the market? I mean, that's just a ridiculous notion because it mm -hmm. ignores societal preconditions. It's like when uh, Trudel Tom tried to use the time preference argument in his video on the labor theory of value. The whole argument proposed by Bombavec on the time preference argument about how you know the laborer prefers to have money now rather than later, therefore no exploitation, is that it ignores the societal preconditions that exist before a decision is made. So, for example, in the idea that something is voluntary, and I have written a response to your video, I forget which one, I wrote a response to one of your videos, I believe, and I wrote a f response to a few of your comments on um, Hoodie Demon's video, but explain this a little bit there. But basically the concept of a voluntary exchange on the market ignores the precondition that some people already own property and other people don't. And so the people who don't are forced to sell their labor power as a commodity. Whereas the people who already own p property, usually by being born in the right family, and of course you can find an anecdotal example of someone going from rags to riches, but it just does not happen enough to be statistically significant. But the people, who, but a statistically significant amount of people who own private property, which is means of production, not just something like your house or your phone. I just wanted to make it clear, though I'm sure if you've argued with enough of us, then you probably know that. A significant amount of it is owned by people who are born into wealth, and people not born into wealth do not have that option. And so they are forced, therefore, by the society, not necessarily by the capitalist himself, by the system that allows the capitalist to own the means of production. So it is not voluntary, just as it was not voluntary under feudalism, because the um, peasants couldn't control which family they were born into. Well, first of all, what your definition of voluntary... I mean, who is putting a gun to their head first? No, I, I never said nobody's putting a gun to your head. I n hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I never said anybody is putting a gun to their head. I said that the conditions that they are born into well, that's what, force them uh, into certain positions. Association or involuntary association is. It is uh, forcing somebody to do them with coercion or force. And to yes, define a under... system where someone is homeless as an involuntary association is bizarro land nonsense. Well, you know, peasants didn't have to work on the, on the uh, feudal farms or the whatever they were working on. They had a choice to leave, just as, um, obviously, you know what happened after slavery was abolished in America, right? Well, yeah, but the thing is, is that they, oh, first of all... I have, a, I have a point to this. You know what happened in crop sharing. Do you know what crop sharing is? Sharecropping? You mean sharecropping, no, sorry, cropping. yes. You know what sharecropping is. So basically, yes. after slavery was abolished, you know, slaves, they had the choice to leave. They could have left. Why didn't they leave? They had a voluntary choice, and they chose to stay with their masters. Why did they do that? Was that because it was voluntary? Did they actually choose to do that? Or was it because they had no other choice? And if they didn't, they would have starved to death. 
or been lynched. What, what, first of all, um, the idea that they would have been lynched, okay, you could, you could debate that all day. But here, but, throw, throw out that I mean, idea. But they would have just, they would not have been able to find another job. That's the majority of the reason why most of them stayed is because they didn't know how to find another job. They were uneducated. And the conditions that they were brought up in prevented them from succeeding further in life. That is very similar to the conditions that poor people are brought up in that prevent them from succeeding further in life. And they no, the idea that sell- poor people cannot succeed, that's the problem with your argument, first of all, is that poor people, when they are born, they stay poor. And that is... No, I never said that. Um, that is I never said crap. that. IRS statistics directly contradict that. Uh, I over hold on a second. Uh, of the people here, who are born you- into poverty die rich and... Um, and even, um, uh, I'd can say you send about me that, can you send me that IRS study? Who are born rich, people who are born rich, um, tends to become poor more often what? than the people who are born poor becoming rich. That's just rich. objectively wrong. That's that, what? No, it's not objectively <laughs> yes, that wrong. <laughs> that contradicts right every now. study that has been done on the topic. Like, no, it doesn't fucking matter the study. We're talking about actual statistics put out by the government, okay? So we're not talking study. about studies we're not what? talking about something that can have bias we're talking about um I'm, what what the statistics people who are you talking about taxes the people who currently manage finances are putting out a report that says that this is absolute bullshit can you send me that report the idea that, yeah because i was gonna no, say yeah, that so i mean it's kind of hard to make your point if we can't see the data we're, that you're talking about yeah, yeah i'm, I'm yeah. fetching it right now because i'm interested well allow me Allow me to interject. Uh, um, so uh, obviously you view the state as coercive and involuntary, correct? And I mean, the the counter argument, for example, um, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Nightmare Fuel, etc., um, who essentially brings up the counter argument to your point that, uh, well, the social contract. And I mean, um, how? And, and so obviously you dispute the idea of the con- uh, social contract because yeah, I, I didn't sign shit, etc. And I would agree with you there. But um, how is your uh, definition of uh, or your idea of property rights uh, different from the social contract? Well, first of all, um, it does oh, not. Okay, I don't require... mean to interrupt, but did you send that study? Yeah, he just did. Uh, yeah, it's in the chat on the side here. I'll, I can even get another one to ver- to. Uh, um... I back it up. It is directly from the IRS. Hold on, I'm not um, seeing it. Um, here, Pierre, can you send it to me on Twitter? Can you like copy it and send it to me? On Twitter? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I guess I'll do right, that. I'll, I'll read it while you guys uh, discuss. But um, so okay, what, what was the question that uh, private property doesn't need? Okay, um, I, I no, no, I, I had a brain fog for a second there, but it, but anyway, um. That is the idea that a uh, social contract is needed to back up private property. Um, first of all, on top of that being a direct contradiction, um, as I pointed out with the uh, with taxation and uh, all of the restrictions on property that the government puts in place, uh, the the idea. Um, you don't need a social contract. You can use uh, property firms to register your property, but property ultimately um, is derived from individual autonomy with um, self-management of resources. Okay. Uh, just to uh, just to state uh, really quickly, uh, I got to go in like the next five minutes because. Um, uh, yeah, we're technically going over time here. Okay. Okay, I'm uh, reading... Sorry, um, actually, here you guys can continue. I don't want to interrupt. But uh, I, I did want to ask, uh, before we go, I would want to ask uh, East Nationalist, was it? Uh, East Marxist. Mar- <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit far off. From <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. But uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, Pierre mentioned before he got on that uh, you used to be an ANCAP. I kind of want to hear your uh, story and reasoning for transitioning, if you don't mind. Um, Well, I was an NCAP back in December, I think. It was a while ago. I was actually, I made a few videos um, on this channel, but unfortunately I got hacked and they were all deleted. So I 
don't have them, but I made a few cringy videos as an end cap, like on how the free market can provide like police or something like that. And, um, but basically I got into anarcho-capitalism from being a liberal and supporting Sanders and then just slowly moving down the ladder. And um, then around December, I read a book titled Markets Not Capitalism, which got me into the um, more leftist perspective on how greed and power corrupt and how a hierarchical structure and capital accumulation can corrupt. And then that got me further. And then I realized that anarchism was pretty dumb. And then I converted to Marxism Leninism. Weren't you an anarcho egoist for? Uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, that was yeah. I, I was, I was a uh, before I uh, accepted the immortal science of stern right Marxism and Leninism. I was like an anarcho egoist for a while. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I actually, I remember, I remember a, a discussion between me and Eastern Marxists. It was called sovereign Marxist at the time. Yeah. Or no, at the time we were just called anarcho egoist. It was, a, it was like an uh, argument when I was like first getting into Leninism, and I was arguing like how. Um, I, I believe it was a question like, how can you be a Sternerite and a Marxist? And I was explaining that, well, uh, th so like through the Leninism, obviously it's an industrial government based on um, industrial union represented. Um, so it, it based on industrial representation. And then you were arguing that like, um, well, like the the union representatives could just become another bureaucratic class. So now you're like, <laughs> now you're like, now you're like a Marxist Leninist, and you're even more authoritarian than me. <laughs> I, I, um, uh, yeah, I, we're gonna shut this down soon, but I do want to get the name of that book again. Uh, Markets not capitalism, but I wouldn't suggest reading it. It was written by an individualist anarchist, and it's pretty cringy. Looking back on it, I have a PDF of it on my phone. But uh, if you are looking for a book, I mean, I read obviously the manifesto. I read that a few times, even as an end cap. But um, I would highly suggest reading this book called Towards a New Socialism, which deals mostly with. Um, Mises is an high X calculation problem, uh, and obviously Lavoie as well. Um, yeah, the, the uh, empirical Marxist, Anwar Shayek, I believe. No, it was uh, Kakshan and Cotwell, but Shayek right, has also yeah. written Capitalism, which yeah. came out actually last year, and I actually have a copy. I would highly suggest reading that as well. But that's more just a critique of neoclassical economics as a whole, specifically he focuses on competition. And um, yeah, he, he just... Um, goes through the theories of competition. He does mostly Keynesian because that's the more relevant school. No offense, but uh, he deals mostly with Keynesian and post-Keynesian as well as neo-Ricardian arguments. But he does deal with a few uh, uh, arguments from Hayek and Mises as well. But uh, thank you, uh, both of you, Pierre and uh, Eastern Marxist. Uh, thank you, Esoteric Anthony, Drunken Magic for the brief time you're on here, and Lady Cheville. Uh, this has been great, guys. Uh, great discussion. Cool. May I just may I just suggest one thing uh, yeah. before we go off? Uh, watch um just as a prerequisite. I, well, I recommend for us. Yeah, I just... Fuck. If we're recommending <laughs> literature, I can go on. Uh, well, well, um, uh, so I recommend to read uh, Wage, Labor, and Capital, and also Value, Price, and Profit, uh, which I'm currently reading right now, actually. And uh, also, uh, I would say maybe even before because I watched this as just a prerequisite to wage labor and capital watch um i believe it's capitalism 101's uh series law of value yeah except the only they're, problem they're, the only problem i have with uh brendan is that like he agrees with andrew Kleeman on the tssi solution to the transformation problem which i think is really cringy but uh other than that yeah his law of value series is pretty good um yeah and, it's good for beginners i would say but yeah, yeah. thank you all uh, for uh, coming uh See you all next time. Have a good day, folks. Go, go, go. Bye, Dad.